That was a belch. This is Luna. That was a belch. I'm David, and this is Luna's Roadmap to Success. Luna is a uh, obviously a Pomeranian. Uh, no, she's a two-year-old Great Dane. And uh, basically, this is her roadmap to success. So uh, she's a pretty well-behaved dog. Um, I think she was a little bit confused about a couple things. Um, uh, she didn't really have a lot of rules. Um, she had a couple. Uh, she is getting exercise, but probably not enough exercise. And she's also uh, just demands attention. She gets right in people's face. You'll probably see it in this video. So um, we started off the video, by uh, the session, by talking about how to give her more exercise, some creative ways of exercising the dog. Um, one of the first things we, uh, I, I like to re recommend is throwing treats up and down the stairs. Come here. Come here. Up here. You look better when you're in the shot. Come. And so uh, I recommend that the Guardian start an exercise journal. So just a spiral notebook, write the date at the top of the page, write down the time and how many up downs on the stairs, the time and how many uh, fetches, the time of ch how long chasing the laser, which you really like doing. Um, down. And then at the end of the day, give a letter grade, A through F. Also write down if she has a barking episode at the door or at the fence or whatever it is. Write those things down as well. Write down what time you feed her. And just anything dog related that's notable. That way we have the data so we start seeing, you know what, every time it's longer than three hours that we exercise her, that's when she gets really excited. Or she always gets the zoomies at 9.15 at night. So maybe we exercise her at 9 o'clock and exercise her before she has a need to have the zoomies. If we have guests come over, we're gonna exercise her before the guests come over. Five minutes on the stairs is equivalent to like a half an hour walk. So maybe only two minutes on the stairs. Um, also, uh, uh, before we have guests, uh, uh, before we go for a walk, exercising her before the walk is also a great way to, uh, to get the dog some, uh, burn off that excess energy. Um, if we take up that top level of energy, it's a lot easier for them to perform. Now, we went out in the backyard and we did a little bit of uh, loose leash walking practice. And when I do loose leash walking training, I do it without a leash and without going for a walk. We just walked in circles in the backyard. So you're going to walk in counterclockwise circles. Uh, or I'm sorry, clockwise circles. You want her on the right. Uh, you want her on the right, correct? So yeah, so we're work, uh, well, I guess we go counterclockwise circles. And every time she comes towards us, we click and then give her a treat. Let's not, yes, yeah, so let's not hit the camera. Um, Come. Every time, every time you have a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, and they should hear the command word after the treat goes in the mouth. So basically, uh, when, what we're just conditioning her to do, we're doing this slow uh, circle. And if she loses interest, make the circle tighter. And just keep on walking around her in those counterclockwise circles until she's walking next to you. Then you click when she comes near you, give her the treat. Then you eventually you take two steps before you click. And then three steps. And eventually you get to the point where she's walking all the way around the perimeter. Yes, you're getting pretty nosy in my back. We walk all the way around the perimeter of the yard before we give her each treat. So the idea is to progressively increase the, the length. Yes, you like that positive sound of the kiss, huh? Um, you gotta come up here to get this one. Usually I tell dogs they stay off of the couch, you're special. Um, all right, so uh, exercise journal, keep that for about a month, uh, give her a letter grade at the end of the day, and then after about a month, you'll kind of see how often you need to exercise her and how much, and you can kind of schedule it in your day. Um, let me see. Uh, she, uh, in the video, very first video we shot was how to keep, teach her to be, uh, I need to be in the shot a little bit, um, is to teach her how to uh, calm down when people come to the door. Now we did it at the front door, but you can do this version at the back door as well. Just the person needs to, can we come over here? Hey, how about over here? Uh, the person needs to just call us ahead of time or have a setup for it. Um, I guess I could theoretically do it. I would prefer the front door over the side door because the front door has a glass door you can see through or the back door probably doesn't have that same setup. Um, but again, exercising here before guests come over is a great way to set her up for success. And go through your phone, go through your address book, people that you haven't seen in a while, invite the one person to come over and get a bottle of wine or some beer or whatever he was and just say, hey, you haven't met Luna and we have this dog psychologist come by and he said that we've got a practice teaching her to not be excited at the door. You could help us with that and then we could have some, enjoy some wine. I haven't, you know, I haven't seen you in a while. Yes, we're going to keep this over here. Um, these are the treats I like to use. These are chicken, uh, tricky trainer chicken liver soft chewable treats. I'm gonna leave the bag here, but there's only I think about three in there. So you can get these on Amazon or Chewy. This is a four, a five ounce bag. You can get a, a four ounce bag. You can get a 15 ounce bag for about 10 bucks. She she likes all treats, but you might want to get a couple. Um, also, we didn't talk about this, but milk bones, pepperoni, begging strips, and sausages are all uh, four of the five most popular types of treats. They all have cancer causing ingredients in them. So uh, I gave you a card to the Green Spot. Go to the Green spot and ask them about treats you can order these they don't carry these at the green spots not my place to tell them what to order but i like these because i've never had a dog not interested in them 
Um, but also getting like kneecaps and uh, the bully sticks, the odor-free bully sticks at the green spot um, are great things to do to give the dog to keep it occupied. Yes, you're just really, she's getting her nose all the way to the floor in that thing. Um, all right, so we talked about some rules as well. Uh, one of the rules, she's really not allowed in the furniture except for right here. We call The guardians call this place, but I would suggest they transition this, get a dog bed, put it in front of the TV, put this blanket on top of the dog bed so she kind of is associated with it and keep on calling it place. We just got done doing an exercise in the dining room, um, having her go to play, uh, a beach, we were calling it the dog uh, or the uh, the floor mat in front of the door, but then there's a, a one in another room that's a little further away, which is obviously a little bit more ideal. So again, practice these things when you're not eating dinner. Get a clicker, go over there, have her come over, sit or lie down. As soon as she lays down, click. Remember the click means you did exactly, that's a precise minute you did what I wanted. Now I'm gonna give you a treat as fast as I can get it in your mouth. So she lays down, you click. If she has a half lay down where she's doing the downward dog, wait for the back end to come down. Hey, bam. And, uh, and then click and then give her the treat and then sign the command word. Come up with a fun command word for each one of these places. Um, after a while, um, if you do this independent of having food there, right there, go ahead and pet her and say down or whatever your command word is. That's passive training. She just laid down on her own. We'll talk about that in a sec. So the idea is to practice when we, when we are at the dinner table, she's going to want to come over towards us. So if we practice this at times when there's no food on the table, there's not as much competition for her attention and she's happy to go and lay down. So practicing that, I'd like you to get maybe about, uh, about you know, five or six treats uh, per practice round and practice that a couple times a day. We have really three quasi-adult adults in the house of one little one. Um, so maybe when uh, we have the daughter as well as uh, uh, the adults, go over there and practice that multiple times a day. And after a while, that you just say beach or whatever the word is, uh, marine, and the dog goes over there on, her, on its own. Um, I also went over the escalating consequences, and the guardians can use those to uh, establish invisible boundaries. Um, uh, using that for the rules, she's now, she shouldn't be allowed on the couch. Um, X mats will help with this. Uh, letter X, M-A-T-S, you can get those on Amazon or Chewy, they're about 11 bucks a piece. Um, shouldn't be allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. Shouldn't be allowed on the carpet here in front of the work island where the people eat. So we were just gonna create some boundaries. She gets in people's personal space, She just and it's not hard to see why, because every time she does, the guardians would pet her. So remember, we're only gonna pet with that purpose. That's all right, he can hang out. Bam's gonna probably knock some stuff down. Um, so um, enforcing these rules, another rule, you have to sit at the door before I open it. Go to the door, say sit once. If the dog doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away somewhere in the house where you can sit down where the dog can see you, wait one minute, and then practice again. Bam's gonna probably, uh, get, uh, with the camera shakes, it's because of Bam. Come here, Bam, let me get you, buddy. Oh yes, you're gonna come over here and hang out with me. Thankfully, you don't have claws. Um, all right, so uh, let me see what else. Uh, uh, so those are examples, uh, so for the rule for the door, eventually do it with both directions for the door, but keep doubling the length of time. The dog has three seconds to comply, or you walk away and sit down and it has to wait longer. And try to use that, uh, use that for other things as well. Put something a dog wants to do at the end of the equation and make the dog do something that you want first to earn that privilege. Uh, I would also practice having the dog not go in the nursery. Uh, practice not going in the kitchen by doing warm-up sessions. So get some bacon, microwave it, and then uh, make the dog leave the kitchen first, microwave the bacon, and then practice enforcing that invisible boundary while you simulate and pretend to cook. After a while, the dog is used to seeing you. It's just like, man, she's got her back to me, and as soon as I cross the line, she's right on top of me. Eventually, the dog will sit and lie down outside the boundary. Then you can do your actual cooking or eat your actual meal. So don't be afraid to set up practice sessions. Um, let me see. We also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Passive training is what I talked about earlier. The, uh, 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 Luna came in and just laid down on the floor. The guardian just petted her really quickly and just said the word crash or down or whatever the word is to lay down. Now... If all things are equal, I prefer to pet a dog under its chin because when a dog feels good about itself, its nose is in the air. Now, I can pet a dog anywhere I want. I just want to avoid patting on top of the head or caressing. I guess patting and caressing are okay or scratching and caressing are okay. Patting often creates a down nose orientation. We don't want the dog to feel bad about things we want. So all things being equal, pet under the chin. Whatever, you can scratch the butt. She's a long dog. So if her butt is here, you don't have to get up to go scratch her here. You can scratch her butt too. But if all things are equal, try to scratch her here. Remember to say only the command word, not good sit or not Luna sit, just sit. And not sit, that's a different word to a dog. 
So just say it consistently the same way. Um, remember to use funny command words. So for the new things we're teaching the dog, come up with fun command words. We have 11 year old uh, in the, a child in the house. Ask the 11 year old for suggestions on what should we call going to this dog bed? What should we call the name to drink water? The name for eating food or whatever these things are, name all the toys. So this way the child feels like that they're engaged and involved in it and you create a vocabulary which is really helpful for the dog uh, to, for us to tell them to do what we want. So um, let me see. Uh, so that's passive training is just waiting for the dog to do it. Every time she does her grumble, call, pet her and call it opera, I think is what the guardian's like for that. She kind of sings. Um, so everything that she does organically on her own within that three second window, we're going to mark by saying the command word after we pet her or give her the treat first. <laughs> Excuse me. Give her the treat and then say the command word. After a while, you'll be able to say the command word and she'll do it. And a check if your dog has the command. If Luna's here and I turn my head this way and say sit and she can't see my face, I turn and she sat. I know that she, <laughs> excuse me, I know she knows the sit. Um, if I turn, say sit and I turn and she didn't sit, then I know she doesn't have them. Dogs learn the gestures first. And so the gesture for her to uh, down is this and pointing at the ground. So do that. And then when she lies down, pet her and say down and, or give her the treat and say down. So we create that audio cue. I really say it twice. So the dog knows the command. If the dog was here, I'd say sit as a command. When the dog sits and I put under the chin and say the word sit a second time to reinforce following the command. We also went over pet, petting with a purpose. Petting with a purpose is waiting for the dog to, or is telling the dog to do something. So if Luna comes up and gets in my face and I pet her, I'm rewarding her for getting my face. Or if she does that instead, what I'm going to do is tell her to sit. When she sits, I'm going to pet her on her chin, say sit, and pet as much or as little as I want. Um, if she's already sitting, I might ask her to come and sit over here or ask her to lay down. So the more that we teach her uh, that we teach her that she can't tell us what to do, she has to ask and she has to do something to prepay for that attention. But she'll sort of start sitting in front of us to ask for that attention. And when she does that, we want to make sure we pet her whenever possible. Your man. There we go. Um, so uh, I use watchwords for them, some of these things. I say paycheck if I suspect someone's petting without a purpose. I say testify or recognize or reward for passive training. I also say vocabulary. Most of us don't realize that we come up with 10 command words for every command expression. Come, here, come here, come here, over here, here girl, dog's name, dog's nickname, tap my thigh and something else. So now the dog's going to listen for 10 words for one command. If she knows 10 commands, that's 100 words she has to listen to out of the 2,000 to 11,000 words humans say every day. That's just easy for her to miss things. So if you come up with a list of the official command words, tape them in the refrigerator. If somebody's using a different version of the word, you say vocabulary, like, thank you, come. And just use the one version of the word. Um, also, I say repeat or rerun if we're repeating a word. Don't repeat it. The more you repeat it, the less you mean it. So say it once, and if the dog doesn't do it, then find something else to do. Uh, and then wait a little bit and then come back and do it again. Uh, I talked about the escalating consequences. Also talked about uh, making sure the guardians are eating something before they feed her. So I eat something. Uh, so I, first of all, I put food in the bowl and she's not allowed to come near it. Then I eat something in five or more bites. Come, that's passive training. And then, I, uh, and then I give her permission to eat. And when she takes her first bite of food, say sushi or pasta or whatever the word is that you want her word to eat is. Every time she kisses you like that, pet her and say, well, maybe say smooches since kisses mean something else. Now she likes to play wrestle uh, with one of her guardians in the backyard, which is fine. Uh, the problem with that, Luna, is uh, she does it when she wants. So what I would do is when she does give you that indication she wants to do it, make her do something else, a transition uh, command. So just make her sit or lie down. Once she sits, then tell her, Come on, and then as soon as you start wrestling, call it WrestleMania or Hulk or whatever you want to say so that she understands that, yes, this is what it's called. And remember, don't let her go too crazy. Dogs have 10 levels of energy. One is uh, barely awake, 10 is as crazy as you've seen her. Every time she gets past level five energy, stop and call it vacation, holiday, timeout, whatever you want. Wait for her to settle down. So if you're consistent with that, after a while she realizes, as soon as I go 5.1 or greater, the playtime stops. If I say keep it 4.9 or less, the good times continue. Um, I use the kissing sound as my affirmation as the hissing as my no. Um, so after a while, the dog is going to start emulating and offering the behaviors we want because those are the things that we're petting for and we're uh, setting up the dog up for success by creating scenarios where she can stumble into a few different things. One of them is what I want. When she does what we want, she gets a reward. Um, Luna, sit. So 
I'm using this hand motion, but if she doesn't sit, if I just keep on repeating it, sit. There you go. Um, then I'm just going to water down my authority. So try to say it once. If she doesn't, then find something else to do and wait for her to settle down and then give her an opportunity. Playing a little hard to get will go a long ways with her. Um, recreate the uh, boundary game that we showed you. Um, when, the, when the child is eating, practice it then. When mom is breastfeeding, like down here, then practice it then. So the more you practice these things at times where it's easy, then when you have guests come over, it's just kind of the dog's automatic, oh, I just don't go on the carpet because guests are over here with food. Um, and when she drinks water, call it agua or come up with a word to drink, a word to eat. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, now, she also likes to kind of lunge and bark at dogs behind fences. She sees the dog, she's fine, but uh, on walks, she knows where they are. She's just getting worked up. For most of my clients, the stuff that we talk about in the first session takes care of those sort of problems. But in a month from now, if you're still having those same problems, let me know. We can set up a short one-hour session. Focus on that exclusively. Set it up where we have one of your neighbors that can have the dog out. We can show you how to redirect your dog or uh, incorporate a replacement behavior. Luna. Well, this drooling beast is Luna, and this is Luna's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it.